It is tax time here in Australia, and this has led me to putting together a couple of videos with a bunch of tips to help you making sure you're not paying too much tax, but also making sure that you are prepared for the end of the financial year. G'day, Ben Futrell here, co-founder of Max My Profit. We're all about helping you build the business you imagine. Now, if you imagined having a business that was well prepared when it came to tax time, then you're gonna love this video. Uh, on another note, make sure you go back and watch part one of these two videos where I went through eight tips in that video as well on how to make sure you are prepped in the best possible way for the end of the financial year. Now, on another note, before I do stick get stuck into this next eight tips, I wanna let you know that I am not an accountant. Uh, this is not professional advice, this is general advice and you should seek professional advice for your own particular circumstances. Never take advice from a YouTube channel, that's for sure. Uh, but this will give you some ideas or some questions to ask, things to think about, uh, bases to cover when it comes to prepping your business uh, for the end of the financial year, particularly uh, 2021. So if you're watching this before 30th of June 2021, some of these tips are very relevant uh, and may be relevant in the future because I don't know what they're going to change in the future. But I know for this year, there's some things because of the uh, different uh, stimulus packages and the coronavirus pandemic, some of the concessions for small business that you need to watch out for. So we'll cover those right now. All right, tip number one in this video is to make sure that you understand uh, a little bit about what is available to you. In particular, this one is a biggie, and that is making sure that you have heard about the lost carry back scheme. And what this is, is that if you made a profit in the previous financial year, but due to uh, whatever's gone on this year, you've actually got a loss in your business, you can carry back that loss uh, to the previous year and get a refund on the tax that you would have paid. Okay, so if you're a business that's been profitable, you would have paid tax. Uh, maybe this year it has led to you being uh, not, uh, losing money, so having a loss, uh, which means that you can now uh, apply that loss to the previous financial year. Okay, this is something because of obviously the pandemic and they want to help small business out. But without knowing this, it's maybe not something that you'll ask. I would expect that your accountant would cover this off with you, but it's a question now that you can ask. Did I make profit last year? And I'm, am I going to report a loss this year? And can I take advantage of that loss carry back scheme? All right, the second tip, and this one is also a biggie, and it's important that, you, you know, if you're watching this before the 30th of June any year, uh, that you think about this, and that's to make sure that you pay your superannuation before the 30th of June. Uh, even though it's not due in Australia until uh, the end of July, uh, if you pay it before the 30th of June, that way you can have it in a tax deduction for this year. Anything paid after the 30th of June will not count, uh, particularly if you're looking to uh, try and uh, create a loss in your books this financial year and taking advantage of that loss carryback scheme to better get a refund on the previous year. But you may as well uh, get your superannuation paid before the end of the financial year. That way you can report it as paid and you can have it as a deduction in the financial year 21. All right, tip number three in part two of this series is to maybe think about paying for some of your annual or monthly subscriptions in advance annually. Now, if you have got a bit of cash flow and you're going to post a bit of a profit and you want to reduce the liability or the taxation that you'll have to pay, uh, one of the things that you could consider is prepaying for the next 12 months of whatever service it is, things like insurances or anything that's on a subscription basis, uh, you may be able to do that. Just be careful. There are some things that you cannot do that with, so talk to your accountant, but there are a lot of uh, services or products that you may be purchasing on a monthly subscription basis of some sort uh, that you're able to pay in advance and get the full deduction for now uh, before the 30th of June. As long as it is paid uh, before the 30th of June, even though you're not going to use those services until next financial year, uh, because you've made the payment, you may be eligible for that tax deduction. All right, the next tip is sort of along the same lines. If you've got expenses that you have committed to uh, in the future, there may be a, a reason or a cause for you to be able to get a deduction for those. There are some circumstances and there are some expenses that you are uh, you already have planned to be incurring in the next financial year that you may be able to bring forward into this financial year. Once again, it is different for everybody's circumstances. So ask the question of your accountant. It's something that not many people know that you can do, but you can make deductions for future plans and expenses, even things like director's fees or salaries and wages, sometimes you can do it. But talk to your accountant to get their advice on exactly what is available for you. Now giving you this next tip makes me a little bit nervous because I'm worried sometimes that people take this a bit too literally. Um, but I want to tell you to go and spend up 
if you have the cause to. If you need new equipment, now is a good time to do it. You're coming up to the end of 30th of June. If you know that you're going to be making a profit but you need to replace old equipment or you've been looking at some new equipment that you'd like to purchase, right now is a good time to do it. Now, there's a couple of reasons for this. Uh, first of all, right now there is a uh, there is no limit on the number of instant asset write-off purchases you can make up to $150,000. So if you want to replace some equipment in your business, now is the time to do it. And as long as you have the cash flow, you can go and buy that. Uh, now remember that if you buy that equipment and you lease it, uh, you could also, uh, well, you would be entitled to making the full tax deduction. So if your cash flow allows you to at least make the lease payments and you've reported a profit and you want to take advantage of that instant asset write-off, you can do that uh, before the 30th of June. Uh, just keep in mind that, that I think you must have bought the item and also have it installed and in use before the end of the financial year to take advantage of the instant asset write-off. Uh, any other equipment that you buy, uh, things like computers, that need to be replaced or it might be other you know other equipment or tools that you you use on the job uh, get out those things bought and paid for before the 30th of June and then you'll be able to get a deduction on those as well so something to think about um, if you've got a bit of cash sitting around and you know you've made a profit uh, go and spend money um, do not do this if you are cash strapped or if you are in a loss situation there's no benefit to you don't just go and spend money to reduce your tax um, that is a, not a smart thing to do I've seen many people try and do that over the years where they go I'm going to make money so I'm just going to go and spend all my money I'd rather spend some money on paying tax and then pull the rest of the money out as the director of the business and then have nothing left over uh, for me as a director. Okay, so just think about that first before you go spending your money frivolously. It's very important that you only spend the money on things that are going to help you build the business over the next financial year. Alrighty, the next tip is another one that is not often looked at uh, or thought of by business owners. Accountants would definitely ask the question, but this will get you thinking about it, and that is to write off any bad debts. That is people that have not paid you that you do not expect to be paid for. Uh, right now, if you're running your business where you've invoiced somebody, that invoice sales amount sits in your profit and loss statement as income, and if you do not pull that back out of your profit and loss statement, uh, there's a chance that you will be paying tax on that money or it'll be seen as an income and it'll be factored in uh, to your financial numbers for the end of the financial year. Once again, it depends on how your accountant does your accounting, whether it's done on a, what's called a cash basis or an accrual basis, but it's definitely a question worth asking because you need to do the, the bad debt write-off before the 30th of June for you to be able to get the deduction out of your uh, income. Uh, so make sure that you do ask that question. Have a think through anybody that does owe you money that you don't think you're likely to get the money back from and make sure you do those write-offs and that way you can take advantage of that before uh, the 30th of June rolls around. Now the next tip is really good for people that have stock and inventory in their business and that is to go through and maybe write off obsolete stock, sort of similar to writing off bad debts. If you've got stock that you're no longer selling or can't move for some reason, uh, maybe it's something to do with international travel, for example, and these items are no longer moving off your shelves, you may be able to revalue stock or write off obsolete stock and get a deduction for that. In particular, if you go through and you revalue stock because the market value has changed, uh, you can then have your closing stock at a lower value than your opening stock and you can make a deduction for the difference. Now this is quite complex and something that you would definitely need an accountant to help you with, but a lot of people don't think about this when it comes to the end of the financial year and your accountant may not ask you about it. But if your business has been affected in the last financial year uh, or the stock that you carry is not selling because of the uh, the pandemic, for example, or the, you know, the way things have changed because people are not traveling or whatever it might be, then there is cause for you to then to investigate what the market value of that stock may well be now, or if that stock is obsolete because of those reasons, you may be able to write it off completely and then you could get a deduction for that. Once again, you'll need to check with your accountant, but I would be asking the question if you feel like you fall into that category. Now, my final tip is to help you uh, personally or anybody else in your family that may have borrowed money from your business avoid paying income tax on that money and that is to make sure that it has been repaid or there is a loan agreement with regular repayments being made. Uh, if 
uh, you know, you, you have borrowed money from your company and let's say, you know, you've borrowed, uh, I don't know, $50,000 or $100,000. Uh, that could be seen as income or treated as income to you and your personal income tax rate could apply to the money that you have taken. Now, once again, it would depend on your your personal circumstances as to what effect this would have on you. Uh, but I've seen many business owners caught out by this at the end of the financial year. And after the 30th of June, you cannot put the money back in and account for it. You need to do it uh, before the end of the financial year to avoid any nasty surprises. All right, so make sure that you get that done. All right, well, there you go. There's my second lot of eight tips. That's 16 in total. If you didn't watch the first video, I suggest you go back and do it because I had some doozies in there as well that a lot of people get caught by and don't uh, don't really know about. They're not really that well known. Plus, there was a couple of things uh, also in that video about some of the concessions made by the government stimulus program in uh, financial year 2021. All right, so I know it's a lot to think of and it can be a little bit brain taxing uh, when it comes to tax. Uh, pardon the pun there, but it can be. And uh, it's really important that you think ahead uh, when it comes to planning your end of financial year so you can be prepped really well for the next financial year. So get all those numbers done, get and see your accountant, ask the right questions, get your books in order and enjoy a very profitable financial year and get ready for 2022. Thanks again. Cheers.